Most sources are now reporting what I've been saying for the better part of the week. It sounds like Ukraine is conducting a controlled withdrawal from Bakhmut, but it seems like they might have their work cut out for them. I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. It is March 6th, 2023. This is your daily Ukraine update. Let's get into it. Okay, first, let's take a look at the control map. Not really any major changes to control in and around Bakhmut. Um, as you guys can see, uh, just some minor advances up in the northeast quadrant of the city. Uh, at one of the things that some of the commentators are speculating, and, and this is just a logic makes logical sense, that Ukrainian forces are going to be withdrawing first from the hardest to defend parts of the city. That's probably everything east of the Batmutka, uh, simply because crossing this river requires forces to pass by some narrow choke points. And it's just easier for all forces, or it's easier for Ukrainian forces if their defense remains within the city. Because you can see that, especially within a city, it's almost defined, uh, cities are almost defined by their uh how pervasive the roadways are. So if you want to get to, let's say, this point, right, you can literally approach it from four different immediate avenues of approach. And if you want to get from here to here, there's literally a dozen different ways you could do it, right? You could, uh, so it means that it's much easier to move troops from place to place, relocate them. In contrast, if you wanted to get from anywhere on the east side to anywhere on the west side, you're basically constrained by existing bridges, uh, which as we talked about, some of which have already been blown and destroyed. So for Ukrainian forces, it's just logical that they need to pull back into the city center um, and that if they're conducting their withdrawal, these are the forces that are going to withdraw first. That said, of course, the biggest problem that it looks like they're facing, and this comes to us from War Mapper, is that only parts, according to, to War Mapper, uh, of the two paved roads out of Bakhmut are passable uh, due to destroyed bridges and Russian advances. Withdrawing troops and supply must make use of dirt tracks and cross fields in order to travel between Bakhmut and Chasif Yar. So here is, uh, to orient you guys to this map, right? This looks like north here, and this is the south. Uh, let's pull this up here. Um, you can see, right, here is... H32, and here is 506, right? 506 has this big bow in it. Um, so here's 506. And as they point out, right, Russian forces, as we've seen, are at least able to threaten this significant portion of 506. So it means if you want to withdraw from Bakhmut, you got to cut south into Avansky. And then they're reporting that actually this area as well is under threat from Russian forces. And you can see if... if Russian forces are within small arms range, meaning that they probably have to cross through, again, this open field here, right? Cross north again, or pass through here and then cross to the north. So you can see there's a number of places where Ukrainian forces may find themselves crossing dirt paths or open roads. The problem is, is that remember that there are not just people, right? Withdrawing your people is probably the priority when you're conducting a controlled withdrawal like this. But you also have to remember that there's a lot of equipment in Bakhmut that's also of high value. There's ammunition depots, stores of ammunition. Uh, there's probably a large number of field hospitals that have been set up um, or at least casualty collection points, medical supplies, crew served weapons, uh, artillery, mortar shells, right? These are tons and tons of supplies that would be very valuable in a future counteroffensive. And the fact is that they are almost certainly going to have to be moved by vehicle. And when you're crossing open fields along dirt paths by vehicle, it can be really hard. Because remember, these dirt paths have to go both ways, right? If you are, let's say, driving a, um, what is it? A, in the U.S., we call them five tons, our sort of five, uh, a, a, it's a truck, four-wheel drive truck that can carry up to five tons of supplies. In Russia, I think they're called Kamzas, Kamzats, um, Kamazas, but 
if you're driving a, a, a five ton or it's Soviet equivalent, uh, you've got to tr- pick up, you know, a truckload of mortar rounds, drive them back across this dirt road, drop it off in Chasavyar, and then drive back across the same field. field. And remember, there's always going to be traffic going both ways. So traffic management becomes an issue. Um, the passability of these roadways, you know, you have to think again, when on a paved road, rain, uh, a certain level of snow, it's not going to stop you from passing that road. But it doesn't take nearly as much rain to render a dirt path like this impassable. And the more trucks cross it, the more difficult it is to pass those, to cross those roadways, right? Just like any other dirt path, when you tear up all the vegetation, it loosens the soil and makes it much easier, uh, much less stable and more prone to becoming a mud trap. All that to say that this is why I've been saying for the better part of a week that Ukraine needed to start withdrawing. I think actually they're probably late to the party if this map is true. Now, I suspect that being within small arms range of Russian forces is not itself intrinsically a reason to close some of these roads necessarily. Um, a good... Uh, uh, a good recon by fire, a good amount of spoiling attacks, right? If you know there's going to be convoys passing, for example, Ukrainian forces may counterattack and uh, ensure the Russians are unable to put rounds onto these roadways. Uh, so there's possibilities to let these sort of uh, convoys pass with the right tactical coordination. Uh, but again, it's hard. It's It would have been way easier to conduct this withdrawal of essential equipment, at least, uh, heavy equipment, uh, while Russian forces were somewhat further away in like Berkiva and Yadhine. Have the, again, and maybe the Ukrainian forces have done it. And all that's remaining in the fight there is small arms and, 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 uh, and most of the artillery and indirect fire support and all the support functions have been moved to places like Ivansky or Chasavyar. Highly possible. Uh, but a, a, this hopefully gives you a perspective of how dangerous encirclement can be when you're talking about thousands of troops and hundreds of tons of supplies. So let's take a look at the combat map. This is also pretty interesting today because you can see the volume of Russian activity has dropped considerably. It's dropped, it looks like, by about uh, by about a third. Um, and they're focusing a lot on Bakhmut itself, which to me is indicative of what I've also been talking about, which is Russian forces are committed to Bakhmut. They are pinned there. They've been effectively eliminated in Volodar. They appear to have been effectively stopped or, or their offensive capabilities have effectively been eliminated in places like Davorichna in the north, right? Basically anywhere um, north of Savo, uh, uh, Svatove have been either eliminated or rendered combat ineffective. The only place where there's still some sort of fight happening on Russia, by Russia, is the Kremina Lyman axis um, and Bakhmut. And as and in um, outside Donetsk. So if you're Ukraine, again, you want to try to thread that needle between and it's it's a really it's a really tough dilemma to be in, because what they the ideal is to get all the uh, Western aid, all the mechanization of forces complete by the time, right, in time to use them in a counteroffensive. So you want them to finish their training on the Bradleys. You want your tank crews to finish uh, learning how to operate the tanks. You want your uh, maintenance and logisticians to be trained in getting parts and, and, and other equipment for these vehicles. Uh, but that takes time. And you also, if you're going to launch a counteroffensive, you want the maximum number of Russian forces somewhere else. And the fact is that Russian forces, desperate for a propaganda victory, are surging in Bakhmut. We can literally see it on the map. But it's not clear that they can do both things at once. And Ukraine may be trying to do that. And that's sort of my fear, is that they are... Um, 
in a, in a strategic sense, their leadership may have gotten a bit greedy, or at least is my fear, that they've said, we are going to hold Bakhmut, pin Russian forces there for another six weeks while we finish training our Brad crews and get them in place so that they can join our counteroffensive. And the fact is that in NATO doctrine, there's there's a saying, and it's it's so pervasive that it's taken as a truism in Western forces. And that is a a mediocre plan executed violently is superior to a perfect plan executed too late. And this is, I think, the Ukrainian problem right now. The reality is that I maintain they should open their offensive as they complete their withdrawal from Bakhmut. Uh, literally, they should have forces already gathering in preparation for an offensive in a, uh, again, as I've suggested, Zaporizhia, but they've publicly said they're going to do it. So, you know, calling your shot, not the best look in the world. Um, not the best tactical decision in the world. But that they should be prepared to open the offensive with the forces they have today, while Russian forces are exhausted, while they are pushing as hard as possible into Bakhmut, and then when they feel Russia has committed to the maximum, they open that offensive. And if it takes an if, if the Bradleys and Leopards don't show up until week six of the offensive, okay, that's fine. But you have to start to break these. Uh, you have to start to break the Russian forces and create chaos in the backfield, even if you don't have the uh, all the offensive tools that you wish you had. And these are the sort of trade-offs, right? Because if they wait, the fear is that they will get so committed to holding Russian forces in Bakhmut that they'll lose more forces um, than they will. They'll lose more combat power than they stand to gain by waiting. And that would be a uh, tragic way for Ukraine to basically d stop its own counteroffensive before it started. So, again, the bias towards action in combat um, is hard to understate. And it's, it's calculated. This isn't to say it's like an MMA fighter. You're never going to win a fight unless you have a strategy to beat your opponent, whether that is coming forward, striking, taking them down and submitting them. You have to have a strategy. It doesn't mean you have to be reckless, but you have to have a good plan. And just like an MMA fighter, you can't have that plan show up late in the fight. You can't sense, you can't open the third round and say, well, now I'm going to start to pressure my opponent. doesn't work like that. You have to, ex you have to have the plan ready to go when the bell rings. And I think for Ukraine, they have to understand that with Russian forces committed like this, all in running to exhaustion, the bell I think is ringing and they have to start something, um, as, Again, as they complete their withdrawal from Bakhmut, as Russia surges in and before Russia is able to reallocate those forces to stop a future offensive. Anyway, guys, um, that's pretty much all I had. Uh, as always, thank you so much for uh, your support. Thanks to our Colonel and Lieutenant tier patrons. I actually think I have to update this for this week. I'm going to be doing it right after this. Um, but you guys are the ones who make this whole thing possible. The Patreon is where I take all the viral combat videos of the week, the drone footage, the uh, uh, GoPro footage, and we break it down. If there's something super viral, I'll sometimes do a midweek breakdown as well. Um, it's, a, it's a great community. They also get access to an exclusive room on my Discord. Um, so you really want to be a member. The link is in the description, and I'll see you guys in the next one.